Greetings, magical friends. I am psychic medium and trance channel Riz the Wiz. And I'm Lady O. And welcome to Psychic Couple Reacts. <laughs> We've been trying to actually say that in sync since the beginning. Last I think time we I was said only psych- able to do. We it said once. psychics couple, then we said couples react, and then we said psychics couples react. And we're like, what is wrong with us? <laughs> in an effort to be dramatic, we just we just screwed all of that up. So well, today's episode is really exciting, and I decided to dress up for the occasion. This, you look amazing. I love you. your magical brooch. It has that. It has this kind of like spirit animal raven yes, kind of it like. Does. Games of Thrones ish, Lord of the Rings, but then something else Isn't it in cool? there. Mm-hmm. So love it, love your rings too. Oh, I wore my rings. Look, I wore oh my, my god, look at your rings. I wore my black obsidian. This is from Kashmir, India. Wore my dragon, got my deer antlers, my pyrite, and my labrador. Wow, we are really ready for this episode. Now. Yeah, I'm, I'm like fully prepared to go into psychic battle mode right now. Well, this has been really fun. Mm. This is episode, I believe, I don't even, I actually lost count. I think it's like six or seven. I don't even know. We just started, but, guys, and this yeah. is this is our, we're bringing you into our living room. This is what we usually would do at night after a long day yes. of psychic reading, shamanic journeying. We've been in the metaphysical psychic world for at least two decades, you a decade and a half. I've done thousands yeah. of psychic readings. We've been and all we're over the world. And into our world. Yeah, and so we wanted to give our take. You want to yeah. talk about what we're going to do today? Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Robert, the most haunted doll in the world. Mm. And I mean, this is this is really probably the spookiest doll out there. And the movie Chucky was actually based on this doll. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so okay. it's the one and only doll that has been documented for over a hundred years with so many different people saying that they have seen it move. It makes facial expressions like a disappointing frown. It has a deep growling voice. It, ha- it does poltergeist effects in the room if it's right. unhappy. Right. It hears footsteps. And so there's many accounts of like the story. So this, so we're going to break that down to yeah. see what's, what's going on. There's been, a, people have been talking about this doll for probably the last you know several yeah. decades certainly in paranormal shows and this is where we kind of go into some of our favorite paranormal shows yes. and bring you a professional's perspective on how metaphysically and working with energy and understanding the spirit world how to better understand these strange um occurrences yeah. and uh, high strangeness as we call it now yeah i mean and we are spending you know most of our uh well, our entire marriage together, we have spent mm-hmm. deep diving into these conversations right. and in these situations, but we get challenged each time. And it's really fun and exciting to see how deep we can go to figure out how this happens. Mm-hmm. So I think we got all the information on this doll we can get right. on the internet to find out exactly the facts of how this whole thing went down. So we're going to walk you through uh, just, it's a simple video. We found that was a really good chronological I liked, video. I like how this was, and we can just, we can share the history of the doll. Yep. We can go into what were some of the kind of uh, pretty troublesome experiences people had yeah. coming into contact. And now the doll is in a museum it's in, in a Florida. Museum okay. In, uh, in Florida. And we, You know, we want to understand how the spirit imbued or why the spirit imbued this doll. But that's what we're going to really dive into. And And I'm going to tune in psychically as well. And you're going to, you know, you're an empath. You're going to feel all of that. And so let's go in. We've, we've watched some of this stuff before, but now we're going to really go in into it. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to start. Is Robert the most dangerous doll in the entire world? Or is it just the imagination of those around him? Do you believe it's possible that offending a doll by looking at him without his permission could lead to your untimely death? Robert the doll is known to cause so much tragedy. Countless visitors have been so scared, they wrote letters begging Robert for his forgiveness. The tale goes like this. It's the morning of October 25th, 1906. A young boy called Robert Eugene Otto receives a present from his grandfather. Instead of unwrapping a new trendy toy, Robert Otto was unaware he was unwrapping a -a one-of-a-kind haunted doll. It was bought by his grandfather on a trip to Germany. To young Robert Otto, it was the best gift ever. He loved this doll so much, he even named it after him, Robert the Doll. To avoid confusion, I will call Robert the doll Robert and his new owner, Robert Eugene Otto, just Otto. Mm. Robert the doll was in pristine. So as we know, children 
and sometimes adults will spend a lot of time personifying or creating an illus uh, an illusion or a fantasy world and making this doll or their doll their friend. come alive. Okay. I mean, we've all done it down to Barbie dolls. <laughs> in condition, at first, he is dressed in a sailor suit, the same suit that Otto wore as a child. What was once white is now stained with a yellowish tint, possibly from the many years of filth, dust, and lack of fresh air. His beady black eyes never seem to look at you, as if he doesn't care for your presence. His face is worn down, covered in nicks and scrapes. He had two small holes in his nose and a small hole in the center of a pink circle, which acted as his mouth. Robert mm. the doll even had his own little doll attached to his hands. Mm. His it dog. was a small brown dog with the same beady eyes and a small nose. At first, Robert and Otto were inseparable. He took this doll everywhere with him and eventually started blaming the doll for the mischief young Otto would cause. Mm. It began with silly, innocent things like blaming Robert for making a mess or eating too many cookies. But as Otto developed into adulthood, he still spoke about Robert the doll as if he was- Okay, so we have to um, fill in some gaps here. Yeah, let's talk about that. <clears throat> so he got the doll when he was around four years old mm -hmm. and around eight years old, into his high school years, but actually it was probably before middle school. Mm -hmm. He he would have the doll in his room and the doll started talking to him in a deep growling type of voice that was heard by the parents in the other room. Right. Now there is uh, there is some controversy as to the backstory of how Robert got the doll. Well, let's let's call the kid Otto because they both share the same name. When Otto got the doll, he was going by his name, Robert. Right. But, right. Robert but Eugene kid's Otto. Name, the kid's Robert yes. Eugene and Otto. And he to be called Eugene. Sorry, excuse me. Gene. Correction, Eugene. Thank you. So he, when he got the doll, now they say that his grandfather bought it in Germany. There was a German toy maker that right. made it. But then there's another story right. that a Bahamian servant girl yeah. who was of African descent and there are various, you know, sort of similar to voodoo type of practices mm -hmm. in those tribal cultures that there was something that was amiss, as there often is in right. servant relationships, and that they gifted this doll to the family. But there was a curse on it because there was a revenge. There was a revenge from the servants. Yes. So this is the controversy. So this family was affluent. It was in the 1900s. One of the wealthiest in, yes. in Key West. In Key West. Yep. And they had servants and people living in the home. It was a large home. So they would run down the hall. They would hear things breaking they would they would bust the door open the little kid was sitting in the corner huddled huddled terrified screaming crying covering his face and all of his belongings were broken or thrown around and the doll is just sitting there and then they also started hearing the doll doll actually talking that was something yeah okay because and they would come in and they say who's that voice? who are you talking who to? are you talking to who's and that deep it was it was this guttural throaty yeah like a, a note that a little kid cannot go so low with their voice right L little boys especially have high voices mm -hmm. all right let's see by the way those eyes yeah that narrator said something very accurate because i never noticed it before she said it never seems to be looking at you oh. like there's some something else it's looking at you but it's also looking kind of behind you or above you do you notice that oh right that's so true mm. it was a living being Robert Otto was now an adult and had his own house, which he liked to call. So his mother took the doll finally as he got into high school. He they, she took the doll and mm. put it in the attic. Now you and I would have burned the doll <laughs> probably on day two. So, the, so her, her <laughs> logic was <laughs> to there's the a really attic. spooky doll. Yeah. I need to neutralize this. Let me right. put it in the dark, dusty right. attic. Yeah. Then the attic Good became one, culture guys and totally terrifying. And... Footsteps at night. They used to hear the doll rattling around and in the attic. There was eyewitnesses who would see the doll moving from one side of the room to another. So you left the doll here, come back, the doll is over here. After they had taken it out of the attic. Because they had kept yeah, it in the attic for some time. Yeah, but while it was in the attic, I'm sure they were terrified to even go in there. Yeah, they didn't go. Yeah, because, you know, it took over the attic. So, parents died. Oh. Robert Eugene kept the doll. Oh. Got married, became an artist. He's an adult. He still feels his yeah. home. Okay. Yeah. The artist house. He liked to place Robert in the upstairs window to ward off unwelcome visitors, and it worked. 
The local school children claimed they saw the doll move from window to window, even disappearing to reappear in the same place. This scared the young children so much. So it was the haunted to house on the block. Otto's entire street With the eccentric altogether. artist living in there. Unfortunately, yeah. and rather quickly, on June 24th, 1974, at the age of 73, Robert was, Eugene Otto year old. passed away. It's believed he passed peacefully in his sleep from old age. However, Robert the doll was now alone. In the same year, a man called Myrtle Reuter purchased the artist house and was surprised to find a disheveled doll perched on the bed. Myrtle was wow. now Robert's new owner. Unlike Otto, Myrtle had many visitors come into the home. Each one swore blind they heard laughing and footsteps on the floor above. Some even claimed Robert's facial expressions would change if anyone spoke badly about Otto in his presence. Now, let's pause Myrtle there. Claimed, so to th still, I can remember, Eugene Otto got married, brought the doll into the house with his wife, where the kids could see it in the window. The wife, she, was, she did not feel good about this doll. Right. She puts it in the attic in the basement. Right. And, and the husband had said the reason why he brought the doll is because he felt like nobody should be subjected to this doll because of what it causes you know the, the suffering and the craziness so he wanted to keep it that's why he kept it oh okay got you now because he's the only one who can handle right. robert right. so at this point no one it hasn't come to them to get rid of the doll in a different way now what i find interesting is that now this guy buys the house the, they leave the doll leave robert the doll in the house yeah the new owners don't so throw this dies, doll away the widow leaves it she does, she but lives. here's what's interesting. You buy a house, there's this disheveled old yeah. doll, and something is compelling. So there's an energy happening that is compelling the person to not throw it away. Remember in Lord of the Rings, even though how much the, the ring caused so much trouble yeah. to Gollum, he could not get rid of it. And mm -hmm. anyone who got possession it of that like ring, that. Yeah. they could not get rid of this doll. Similar. Hmm. Okay. Robert would move around the house, sit by windows, travel downstairs alone, even hide in some of his possessions. After a long 20 years of mishaps and mischief, in 1994, Myrtle decided to donate Robert to the Fort East Martello Museum, located on Roosevelt Boulevard, Key West, Florida. As of today, Robert is kept in the basement of Fort East Martello. He is locked in a glass case and seen sitting in a wooden chair, still with his little toy dog clasped in his hands. Over the years, the museum has received an overwhelming amount of letters, mostly from visitors asking the staff to apologize to Robert on their behalf for disrespecting him and not asking permission to take his photograph. It's mm. reported that if Robert feels disrespected, he curses the lives of those who offend him. Wow. He has caused divorce, broken noses, illnesses, and even death. Broken One noses. visitor in particular, who will remain nameless, had a very odd experience with Robert. As soon as this man walked into the room where Robert was, he began to feel very cold and nauseous. He was so uncomfortable in the room, he quickly took a picture of Robert and left. After getting in his car, he looked at the photo. Still feeling nauseous, he looked down at the blurred photo only to find Robert looking into the camera with an eerie smirk on his face. Wow. Freaked out, the visitor decided to drive home. On his way home, he noticed in the car mirror that his nose was bleeding profusely. His car seemed to malfunction, causing the man to spin on a busy street. He was spooked, but unharmed, and he considered this a warning. He rushed home, and with blood still smudged around his face, he wrote a letter apologizing to Robert for the disrespect he had shown. Okay. Robert has been captured moving in many videos, and some people claim to even there. see him blinking. Don't you think? He writes a letter. So, okay, so the museum has rules saying that if you want, first of all, if you want to take a picture of Robert, he's behind the glass, you have to ask permission. Mm -hmm. You're, there's a list of rules. You have to say goodbye to Robert. You have to be authentic in how nice you are in asking oh to be able to take the picture. And this is because so many people have had something happen to them because they feel Robert felt disrespected. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to dive into 
a lot of this. You want to play a little more? You want to say something? Yeah, I do want to say a lot. He became so famous, rumors spread that Robert inspired the movie Chucky. (laughs) However, this is not true, and it seems to upset him if mentioned in his presence. If you are brave enough to visit Robert, there is one simple thing you must do to remain safe. Show him respect or face the consequences. Wow. Okay, where do I even begin? First of all, you know, we can go down the road of talking about the idea that this was a curse and what does that mean? We could go down the idea of there's a spirit that's having fun with this whole thing and enjoying the whole thing and creating this Mm. we could also go down the road of energetically human beings like yourself and i standing there sending these stories of affirmation agreeing to Mm. the 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 drama the drama Mm -hmm. we call it a psychic drama so so we would Mm. be agreeing that yes this is happening so now i'm afraid sure you know, like collective consciousness or group, you know, group. We've got a lot of stuff to cover here. So let's go down. Oh my God, where do we start? Well, let's first, let's talk about can objects get imbued? That means absorb or can a spirit inhabit an inanimate object? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about a few things. I would tell you that in my experiences as a medium, that there is spiritual energy that does get attached to an object in the same way as if I had a perfume on my hands or a cologne and I rubbed a different object, you would still smell that residue of that cologne mm-hmm. on that object, whether mm-hmm. it's a shirt, a piece of jewelry, whatever it is. That's why people have those experiences when they go into a, a, a field where there was a, a battle and there's, you know, the energy behind there's it. There's an imprint, right? right? An imprint. So, okay. So that's a psychic imprint. Right. Just like when you walk into a room as an, as an empath, aren't you feeling kind of yeah. emotional imprints? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what does that feel like in for you? Visceral. So you'll get the sweaty, the you know, the sweaty palms. The do you also get heartbeat. happy sometimes in a going into a room? Because um, I notice a lot of empaths feel it, the negative stuff first. Do you also ever go, oh, there was this beautiful love affair that happened in this room? <laughs> That's rare. It's rare, right? Because yeah. you're more tuned into seeing what's because wrong. It's heavier. I think it's the density. Maybe it's just more packed mm-hmm. and condensed. The, the yeah. emotions are so heavy. I think that's what is stronger it comes across maybe so there's a psychic technique to reading an object which is called psychometry psychometry is when a psychic picks up an object and is able to kind of feel sometimes they use it in missing persons Mm -hmm. um again same principle a dog smells something and they go they have a thousand times stronger sense of smell a an intuitive person has excuse me a thousand times more sensitive sense of um sensitive sense of energy (laughs) right so yes that is true that the energy can get on there but can the actual spirit identity get into those objects i would say no except for in dolls yeah here is why (laughs) you're not going you never see a haunted rubber ball that is like creating something you never see a haunted let me get my big small object (laughs) to protect me so there's a there's a word a very fancy word And uh, it's called anthropomorphic. And what this means is basically what human beings tend to see themselves in shapes. For example, you look at clouds and the first thing you'll start to see is more of a human form or a Mm -hmm. face. We see faces in things all the time, a puddle, droplets of water, right? Um, But that I think the brain is always looking for recognition of itself. Yes. Now, since these spirits are in human form before they become spirits or disturb spirits... All of their consciousness, their intellectual consciousness is focused in a physical reality of this earth and what they see as themselves. So no one logically as a human, you wouldn't think, oh, if you had a choice between a doll and a choice between a glass or a mug, you're not, you're not going to inhabit the mug. OK, I agree. Since you are energy and everything is made of energy, including everything that we call a solid. Right. So you would go more towards the doll. And that's why throughout history in all these cultures, we have voodoo dolls and we have talisman and we have uh, pendants and lockets with the form of people. Well, let's talk about the agreements people have with those talisman and those, those objects. Like like soul agreements, psychic agreements. All of the above and just belief system agreements. So, well, how would you define that so, so everybody can, let's, can I mean, I in. could I could take a very serious one, but I, I'm going to mention it. I'm going to drop it, but I'm not going to actually go through with it. Oh. The cross. Okay, so that symbols. Talisman. 
Mm-hmm. So that's an example. Mm-hmm. And then other examples would be um, maybe in other religions or it could be, um, you know, even in sports, you have these rings, you have the Super Bowl ring, you have... Well, that's an interesting point. Right. You have, those are talismans. Mm. You have um, objects that Trophies represent... Trophies are talismans. Those are talismans. Okay. So objects so that have, have great people, emotional meaning. Yeah. And they have a group yeah. of people that agree to that. So now to somebody... From another country or something that doesn't know anything about the NFL Super Bowl in the U.S., they, they find think anything this of ring it. and they're mm-hmm. like, oh, cool, let's melt it down for the gold. They have no care or concern what They don't this know is. about all the battles on that field right. and the loss and the victory and yeah. all the energy of the fans and the players that yeah. are contributed to right. why that object. And we can go down okay. many rabbit holes with that, as you guys can imagine. So, so it's, it's like agreement. magnetic energy, right? So yeah. you're, you're talking about... So imagine that agreement has emotions behind it and that has intentionality behind it. So we're all putting the people around, like, for instance, around Robert. They're putting that intention and they're putting that agreement. Now, I'm not saying there's not a spirit there. So you're saying it snowballed over the years because yeah. when the minute that you warn people, hey, something can happen with this doll. Now you're creating an emotional reaction within them, yeah. which changes frequency, yes. right? Because when we have different emotions, yes. our aura changes. It's a different frequency. Well, you have social experiments for fear. You can find those on YouTube all over the place. Dogs can sense fear. Yes. What are they sensing? They're not reading the. They're not reading necessarily the expression on your face. Mm-hmm. They feel the vibrations of fear coming off of That's you. That's correct. Okay, so. So by the same token, Mm -hmm. we are, what you're saying is that we are, people are being introduced to Robert over the years Mm -hmm. as the haunted doll. Right. And so what everything he started off with, that energy, that spirit decided to stay because they were getting the reaction they wanted. Okay. Wow. And then there was an excitement Mm -hmm. and then they brought, it brought more and more of their energy fields more like, um, it's like, it's like, imagine you're fluffing your aura, like you're getting excited. You're, you're stimulated. So now you go into this room and then now you're already prepared to be terrified and you're prepared to be scared and you try to not be, but there's still a lot of emotion. But the spirit is, is in a sense, just getting off on that, right? It because... could be. Now, the part where these people leave and get into car accidents, get arrested, leave with bloody noses, health mm-hmm. issues, get fired, fired about, yeah. people that worked there, um, people who lived in the original house. So let's say, what is the negative energy? So there's this spirit whom we don't haven't identified yet is in Robert the all the spirit wants something it wants to convey it wants to it wants to connect but not in a positive way mm-hmm. it's lashing out in some way it wants its own dominance we could go into how does it actually do it though right because it is creating after a while when you see all the things that happen and if you've never lived in a haunted house and you've never been touched by a spirit or you've never been some people that i know have been pushed by one my hand has been touched many times by a spirit People don't really, some people don't really believe that that actually happens. Oh, it happens. And And it's it's, terrifying. And it's terrifying. And when you finally get there, all your stories, all your big talk about haunted places don't exist till you get to a one where the the paranormal activity is so high. The toughest, strongest, most. We've seen them all go down. (laughs) Hardcore people. If you get touched by a spirit. (laughs) <laughs> you get be- your believer really quick. Yeah, really fast. So this spirit wants to wants to affect us, wants to scare us. We call now Eugene the boy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little deep here. Ready? You guys gotta hear me hear me out with this one. As a medium, I will tell you that we have the ability. There's a, a, a through a great great strong emotional intent. We can create kind of like, you know how we can create a cloud around us? You can feel a cloud over the head of someone. It's like a dark cloud, we say, Mm -hmm. right? Well, by that same token, multiply that by like a thousand, we create energy forms psychically. These energy forms almost start acting out because they are energy. They'll start acting out. So in a sense, it is very possible that Eugene himself... Due to his, even as a little kid, he could be a very advanced little kid, certainly emotionally. Maybe there was something deeply emotional going on with Eugene. And then he, with that built up emotion, created this energy, intelligence, a version of him, almost like giving birth to something, like a a darker cloud version of him. And that came out of him. He goes into the doll. Doll is wearing the same, his own clothes. And then he calls the doll by his own first name and says, now I am not Robert. Now I'm Eugene. So it's like a displacement of him saying, I'm no longer that kid before. He's the bad one. But it actually happened. 
So I will take that because mm. I think that is really close and very accurate. And I want to add mm. the possibility of a spirit on the other side liking this game that's happening. And jumps in. And jumps mm. in to maintain. Also, because they because those low level spirits who do not want to go to the other side, who have unresolved emotional baggage left here. And they are attracted by fear. And, and kids. Sadness, and kids and who kids, are open. Yeah. Yeah. So this and, is just wreaking yeah. havoc. Now... I would love for you to talk about. Oh, God. Remember something. In all experiences, <laughs> the collective consciousness of those immediately involved, meaning all family members in that house, and I've heard you say this, had have something to do with the experience that yes. is that it goes on in that house. So, Absolutely. So there's a part of their consciousness now that wanted or like somehow wanted this to happen? Or agreed to it. To release pressure in the family because yeah. they were really wealthy. So I don't... let's go even deeper okay. now. Mm -hmm. Okay, get your scuba gear on. <laughs> okay. I love it. So, you know, there's agreements that we make with our fellow travelers. So like karma, like I'm going to be your dad in this life. You're going to be my mom. You're going to be the person that bullies me. I'm going to be the person that bullies you. And we switch roles. So that's the agreement. Down to I'm going to be the one who murders you. <sighs> I'm going to be the one who rapes you. Oh, my God. I'm going to be the one who gives you a million dollars. It's so heavy. Yes, it's heavy, but it's an agreement. And those agreements are made on the other side in another dimension before you even get here. There's no time and space, mm. as you know. So these agreements are made prior for our own learning experience and mm. for our, us to get value from it in some way. So, so there there's was some an very strange karmic yeah. connection with these horrible events that happened to us. And I want to say one last thing about yeah. that as like a, um, a little tagline, you can't, you, it's impossible for you to attract anything that you haven't previously agreed to on a cosmic level, on a cosmic level. Right. And, and we've known this happened. because, because we've done past life regression. We've yes. watched past life regressions. If you guys have done the research, this is, a, this is a very powerful subject, right? It can be very emotional for people. But bear with this understanding because there's no point in talking about spiritual stuff unless you talk about the purpose of your life, how you're transforming, how you're, how you're becoming who you're here to be. And when we've watched past life regressions, there have been people. I've seen it with my own eyes who had very terrible things happen to them and the hypnotherapist doesn't even know, but then they find out in the hypnotherapy session that that person in the last lifetime did it to that other person. Yeah. So, they so the victim in this life did it in that lifetime, which is mind blowing. But And one time when I had a recent hypnotherapy session, mm -hmm. I discovered one of the most traumatic incidences that happened to me where someone was trying to actually kill me mm. and it was a life or death situation. My life flashed before my eyes. Yeah. It was like really terrifying. Mm. I was able to go in there and I connected all these dots and I found out that the reason I became a shaman mm -hmm. 15 years later mm. and the reason I am doing what I'm doing today and the reason I'm a life coach and a travel life coach and I can help people is from that Agreement. And I had, and I had from a that lot agreement. Of, yeah, I had a lot of incidences before that and after, but that particular one stood out as one of the most traumatic. And that one was the catalyst that caused me to be the shaman I am today. So instead of being totally opened, fearful from, yeah. from that experience, mm -hmm. I now have actually thanked the soul for playing his role. That's next level. Of, it's next level. That's next level of evolution I am who I right am there. Today because of that, because if you follow the trail, well, I'm From a medium what? because, look, for, for me, I had the four closest people to me out of everyone in my family. I had four people, my best friend who passed away, you know, suddenly, all of them unexpectedly. And that opened up my psychic ability, that great pain, that great trauma, that great sort of violence of life. Um, I would have preferred if it didn't happen that way, but it did happen that way and where I moved forward with it. So... This is very interesting to me with this case because it's been so talked about and there's all these YouTubers who've kind of gone and just done the paranormal thing with it, which is cool, but we're not here for that, guys. We're always going to go into the professional decades of experience in shamanism, mysticism, psychic research work, energy work, and intuitive work, okay? We are bringing this to you and understanding 
that is now much more contemporary and because we're not going to, you know, psychic work is not where it used to be in the past, which was just about telling predictions or look out for this or look out for that. Now it's about how understanding the force. Now it's understanding kind of how do we create things through the energy that we are because everything is energy. So now I have a question for you. For sure. So let's talk about curses. Okay. So let's say that one story is correct that the doll was cursed. Okay. So, and it was, she was a voodoo goddess mm -hmm. or priestess. Yes. Uh, well, she was just a practitioner, perhaps. Right? right. So let's talk about what is a curse then. Okay. So the curse. Which is a long conversation, but we're going to try to. All right. Let's talk about this. Curses <laughs> and anything that you are uttering for we, prayers, meditation, the power of the word is only as powerful as the intention and belief system that it is deeply rooted in. For example. And you know, a lot of religions believe in that. There's a lot of beliefs. Of course, that's, that the in word fact, that's, creates reality. Your word. First, there the was word. the word. Right. First, there was the word. So Your the words word, create worlds. Words create worlds, right. guys. So it's also about the words can't create worlds unless there's an authentic intention behind it. So when we're blessing our food, you might say we're being in gratitude for this, and then if you can really get into that feeling, it feels really, really good. Mm -hmm. You remember how grandma's food tasted the great best, right? Everybody's grandma somehow had the best tasting food is because she was imbuing her loving Absolutely. spirit into it. Okay. Right. Same principle guys. Now, can you get cursed without believing in a curse? You actually can, because now we're not going to talk about curses. We're just talking about energy where the world is going is we're starting to understand that this entire reality is made of energy. So you have to kind of take these safeguards in regular life. Look, you wear your seatbelt. You don't walk on the, on a city street barefoot, right? Right. Even tribal people didn't walk through a thorny forest without moccasins. So by the same token, you're going into navigating the spirit world. You have to protect yourself. It's just, it's just common sense. And there are things that hold vibrations that are more powerful for you than certain other things. So something that brings you great joy, something you wear around your neck that you feel is is really connected to good energy oh, protection protect yeah so all of this lighting candles so we have a lot of physical things that we can do so curses can an object can be imbued with that negative energy but by the same token it can be reversed right and that happened to me one time i did actually feel that i was cursed one time mm -hmm. way back mm -hmm. and i felt like um this person who cursed me was like plaguing my thoughts i had this dark kind of cloudy energy Everything in my life just seems tainted by that at the time. And I didn't feel like I can get out from under this spell. Mm -hmm. And so with, and I was early on in the early days of my, you know, spiritual healing and my work. And I was, I was like, how am I being cursed? That's impossible. So as I, I looked into it and I went deeper, I realized I was like, oh, I have to be a willing participant. So the best way for me to unravel this is I have to learn what it is that I needed to get out of this experience. Because those beliefs what? that you had were buried. You were kind of a, a very logical person when I met you. You mm -hmm. know, even though you had an openness to spiritual thinking, mm -hmm. you're very logical. But th that doesn't mean that if we had if we had kept digging with you, which we did, that underneath, underneath, underneath all that logic, there were some beliefs about good and evil, ghosts yeah. and things. Because and I did feel susceptible and open that somebody could do something to me in those realms or uh -huh. in another realm. Okay. And that's where I had to do a lot of my work was, yeah. why am I leaving myself uh, susceptible, open and vulnerable in other realms if, if I believe that something like harm is going to happen to me, then I'm just inviting it so now here's what's interesting so when you go to see robert the doll in the museum and there's these rules just take the rules seriously because there's an energetic agreement of you being there so just do the rules because in that you are still i want to say invoking a good energy around you that's interesting it's just like saying hello to someone and being polite when you say I hello mean, obviously people have been wanting this doll around and they still want this doll around well, and this that, doll is still here that spirit so, is not <laughs> didn't ozzy i'm still looking ozzy at and jack <laughs> osborne went and like they supposedly destroyed the doll no ozzy and jack went and then they bought a, a, a replica of the doll oh. and ozzy thought that his conditions were getting exacerbated by this doll so they because they, of the visit <laughs> they blew it up they blew it up but this well, has been we amazing burned it 
And then Why didn't spirit, anybody just burn this doll? And then that spirit would have just gone somewhere else. Okay, guys, if you burn the doll, you're not burning the spirit because the spirit exists in the, now in the ether. So what you'd have done is simply release the spirit from the physical doll. It might have jumped into another doll or it will just go somewhere else. Okay, so, so, so this is really our take on how things, objects get I don't know why I'm holding Imbued. up Big Bear. Don't my say Bigfoot, anything. Because he's precious and he's he's an angel. A hundred um, years from now, they're going to be like, the psychic Sasquatch <laughs> doll is going to be sitting in a museum. Okay, so yeah, this was our take on what we think about Robert the doll. Please tell us what you what think. What you think, yeah. I'd about our breakdown and how you feel about objects. Do you have any objects like this that haunt you? And... Can you relate to any of the things that we're talking about? Please like and subscribe. We're so excited to be sharing our world with you. And, and let we can't us know. wait yeah, for the next episode. Yeah, let us know what you want us to talk about and react to, and we'd be happy to, to consider it and put it on the show. So be cool. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye.